ਲੈਟ ਫਿਕਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਲਿਖੀ ਹੈ ਟੁਡੇ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਆਵਰ ਲੈਸਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਐਗਰੀਗੇਟ ਡਿਮਾਂਡ yesterday we were talking about the macroeconomics how macroeconomics uh, will be used in order to study the economic variables at the national level and now uh, we have also analyzed a few things like national income growth and another thing that is called um, inflation rate full employment or low unemployment and at the same time we are also talking about balance of payment and exchange rate so today one by one we are starting our theory of macroeconomics by starting with aggregate demand so aggregate demand means the demand of all those goods which are produced by a country in a given year whatever the goods and services they are produced by a country and how are they demanded by the people of a country and those people who are living out of the country like the farmers if they are also demanding our goods we are exporting them and definitely that is also the part of our aggregate demand so aggregate demand means aggregate demand means demand of all the goods and services all the goods and services services produced by a country in a given year produced by a country in a given year this is called aggregate demand many types of goods and services are produced by a country in a given year so aggregate demand basically it is consists of these following thing consumption investment government spending and net exports aggregate demand consists of consumption by the households like consumers who are they demanding or are they consuming the goods and services which are produced by a country in a given year these are the consumer items and investment means the capital goods which are demanded by the producers in order to have investment in the country in order to produce more goods and services in the future that's called investment government expenditures on those goods and services which will improve the infrastructure of the country like road networking like we have uh, education and health so these government expenditures will create more and more employment opportunities and due to those employment opportunities aggregate demand will also be created in the economy nx mean net exports exports minus imports so exports are the expenditures of the farmers on our domestic goods which are produced over here so that's why they are part of our aggregate demand because they are demanded by the farmers and imports are these are the goods which are demanded by our nationals and they are not produced by our country but they are produced by the other producers who are in the other countries so we minus them the imports and if our exports are demanded more than the imports and definitely aggregate demand of our country will be increasing now i am going to draw the aggregate demand in front of you here and i'm taking real gdp which is denoted by y and this is the price level general price level keep it in mind this is not a price of single good as we were doing in microeconomic study in our chapter number 2 and 3 that was the price of a single commodity and its demand in the market 
okay real gdp means this gdp is measured gdp means gross domestic product whatever the output is produced in a country in a given year that is called gdp real means what now it is measured at constant prices it is not having the impact of increase in prices like nominal gdp i will tell you in, in the upcoming lessons what is meant by nominal gdp and real gdp so here we are taking the real values in which gdp is measured at constant price level rather than at current current year prices now aggregate demand that will have a downward slope it is also downward sloping keep it in mind it is same like the market demand of a product but here we are not taking a single product in demand but we are taking all those goods which are produced in a country they are being demanded at different price levels at the different national price level okay here in our microeconomics market demand we said prices of other goods are kept constant here we are not taking the prices of other goods constant because this is the demand of not a single commodity here prices of all the goods whatever they are this is the demand of all those goods we are not keeping the all prices constant but we say at general price level this is the demand of all the goods so how can we keep the prices constant so you can also see this aggregate demand curve is also downward sloping like the market demand curve you can also draw it like a curve you can also have this type of shape aggregate demand curve or this thing both are acceptable now see aggregate demand curve it slopes downward what does it mean that the general price level is inversely related with the real gdp because aggregate demand is also showing us the demand of all the goods and services at different price levels in the country in a given year when prices are high when this is the price level less real gdp will be demanded by the people of the country less goods and services will be demanded at high price level <coughs> and when price level goes down more goods and services which are produced by a country they will be demanded by the households investors government uh, bodies and farmers so we say like the market demand aggregate demand curve is also downward sloping it also has inverse relationship between general price level and the real gdp this is what we say aggregate demand curve is also downward sloping in which general price level and real gdp they are inversely related with each other now the question is why why aggregate demand slopes downward what are the reasons behind why aggregate demand curve is sloping downward there are three reasons one is wealth effect what do we mean by wealth effect when general price level increases real wealth or real purchasing power of wealth that will decrease like prices are increasing in case of inflation you can say when the prices are increasing the real wealth or the real purchasing power of wealth <coughs> will decrease and the households they will be demanding less goods and services because their prices in general they have increased so the purchasing power of wealth they are owning that has gone down they will be unable to buy more goods and services so this is the first reason when general price level increases the real wealth of people that will be decreasing that's why they are demanding less goods and services so real wealth real purchasing power of wealth will decrease second is international effect
What do we mean by international effect? When prices of our goods they are increasing, so what happens? Our exports will become incompetitive in international market. When our exports are becoming expensive in international market, they will be demanded less by the farmers. So internationally, when our competitiveness decreases due to increase in our price level in our country, the farmers they will not be demanding more of our goods which are our exports to their country. So international effect will also show us that our international prices if they are higher than the other countries' products, then definitely farmers will not be buying from us. So their demand of our goods will be decreasing due to increasing prices. Third thing which is also going to have a reason of the downward sloping aggregate demand curve that is called interest rate. When prices are increasing people are unable to buy more goods. Do you think if they don't have enough income to buy the goods and services what happens? They will be borrowing, they will be starting to borrow more loans. So when loans demand is increasing, so in the loans market rate of interest will be increasing. In order to borrow more loans, they have to pay more rate of interest and due to increase in that rate of interest, they will drop the idea of buying more goods and services because in future they have to pay more interest on the borrowed amount. So when prices are increasing, if people are not having enough income to buy the goods, they will be demanding more loans and due to increase in demand of loans, when demand for loans is shifting rightward, in equilibrium market we see the equilibrium rate of interest will be increasing and that way what is going to happen, people will not be borrowing money in order to buy the goods, they will decrease the demand of their uh, goods which are produced in the country when prices are increasing. So keep it in mind, these are the three reasons why aggregate demand slows downward. The first reason that is, the wealth of the people will decrease in real terms. It will be having fall in the purchasing power of the wealth due to increase in prices. General price level, if it is increasing, people will be buying less number of goods and services. And international wealth that is out of the country, whenever prices are higher than our competitors, then definitely the farmers will not be buying our goods and interest rate is another phenomenon due to increasing prices people start borrowing money and when rate of interest goes up they will not be buy, borrowing money and their demand for goods will also be decreasing because they don't have enough money to buy the goods and services. So these are the three reasons which we analyze why aggregate demand curve slows downward. Now come towards the shift factors. This is called the movement along the curve. When general price level changes, the aggregate demand will move along the curve. Like when prices are falling, aggregate demand will be expanding along the curve. And whenever general price level is going to increase, aggregate demand will be having contraction at the national market. Now we see what are these things, consumption, investment, government expenditures and net exports, these are actually what? They are the shift variables, they are you can say the variables which can affect an aggregate demand in order to shift it. For example, if people are thinking that in upcoming days prices will be further increasing. They are forecasting, they are having in mind the prices of the household items, they will be increasing in the future time. So they will increase their demand right now. If their expectations about future prices that they are going to high in future, their aggregate demand at present time will increase, they will buy more consumer items at present time. So when they are forecasting that future prices will be increasing, then aggregate demand will shift rightward. Or government will decrease taxes on their incomes. When taxes are decreased on their income, their disposable income will increase. And due to increase in that disposable income, definitely they will 
buy more goods and services and aggregate demand can shift rightward whenever they are taxes on their income they that has those taxes have gone down aggregate demand will shift upward or you can say when taxes are increasing aggregate demand will shift downward okay consumers can also increase the demand of the goods and services when rate of interest on savings is lower or on the borrowed loans the, the rate of interest is going to be lower so in that case we can say people will be demanding more goods and services so we say when expected prices they think in mind that they are going to increase at present time they will be buying more goods and services and if they expect that future prices will be lower than today's prices so they will stop buying today and they will buy more in future okay so another thing i said about taxes rate of interest they are going to affect the consumption factor okay what about the investment when producers they are buying more capital goods in order to produce more goods and services because aggregate demand will be increasing in the upcoming years they are going to start more investment so definitely this increase in investment will cause a rightward shift of aggregate demand and when investment decreases keep in mind interest rate is affecting investment when interest rate is lower for the producers they will be borrowing more funds in order to buy more capital goods so aggregate demand will again be shifting rightward and when interest rate is high it is difficult to borrow more funds more loans so aggregate demand will shift downward what about government spending this is fiscal policy we all know when government spends more money in the economy what happens that will create employment opportunities and due to that improvement in employment opportunities aggregate demand will be increasing because now people are having more income to spend as before so government spending is also causing a rightward shift in the aggregate demand what about our net exports when global income level increases or our rate of interest rate of exchange exchange rate becomes depreciated the other currencies will become appreciated and in their currency our prices will be lower but they will be demanding more of our goods or their income level increases like the global economic activity is going to be higher than our country's economic activity but definitely they will be buying more goods and services from us or our price level is going to be lower than the other country's price level so definitely they will be demanding more of our goods on the other hand when our economic activity is booming we are earning too much then our income level is increasing definitely our people they will be spending their income on imported goods so increase in our income level increase our increase in our domestic general price level will increase the imports in our country and aggregate demand of our goods will shift downward when we are buying more of imported goods aggregate demand of our goods will be shifting downward another factor which is a demographic factor of aggregate demand that is the population size of the country over the period of time like after one decade what happens the population size of a country will have more increase in number of people so in that case when population size over the period of time is growing due to more birth rate or the death rate so definitely aggregate demand will be shifting rightward after some time when population size is going to increase or money supply can also affect the increase in aggregate demand in the country when central bank creates more notes aggregate demand will shift rightward because printing of new notes will decrease the rate of interest in the money market and as a result aggregate demand will be having a rightward shift so all these things if we have analyzed that is about aggregate demand what is meant by aggregate demand and what are the components of aggregate demand 
and how it slopes downward, how it looks like, how will it shift right and left, we all have studied right now. So I think this is more than enough for today that we have completed our aggregate demand section and in our next class we will be doing the aggregate supply section and then our lesson will be proceeding towards national income equilibrium and then we will be having more of uh, you can say inflation topic coming up to study them carefully and after completing inflation we will be in our last part of this chapter that is international trade balance of trade and balance of payments section and exchange rates then this chapter will be over so right now i will be sending you a home assignment related to our previous topics the previous chapter which we concluded yesterday so uh, do practice at home study it carefully and raise questions if you are having and browse internet as well go through your syllabus book or whatever the reading material you are having read them carefully and try to draw the graphs and show the shifts of aggregate demand carefully because this aggregate demand is different from the market demand of a single product their shift factors were different as compared to the aggregate demand shift factors okay we make this uh, distinction that your answer to the shifts of aggregate demand the variable factors which will be changing to cause a shift they are not the same like the microeconomic shift factors they are different now so that's all for today thank you see you again on monday with new topic of aggregate supply